Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Terran Marines, written by XR171. Final checks! Lance Corporal David Riggs stood up and began checking the armor of the person in front of him. He verified the helmet was sealed and the camera was recording as indicated by the tiny red light. Moving down, he saw no missing back armor plates and the backpack showed a full charge of air and power. The midkit below the backpack still had a tamper seal from when they geared up. On their right thigh, he located the shot shell pouch, still loaded. Then on the left, a small backup canister and suit repair kit. Again, all armor panels in place. As he looked over the boots, he saw they were sealed and magnetized. He tapped their left shoulder with the fist, just as he felt the same in his. It was a simple ritual, repeated countless times right before deploying whether for training or combat. He looked down quickly, counting his rifle magazines. All ten were in place. Today was not an exercise, though. A shuttle full of children had been kidnapped and held for ransom. He saw the news broadcast as they executed the teacher live. The Terran Republic's response was swift. His entire company had been mobilized aboard their ship, the TRW Chesty Puller. His platoon was aboard a boarding shuttle rapidly closing in on the pirate vessel. They had managed to successfully approach by stealth. Soon, they'd be aboard and ready to teach anyone who wished to learn about the culture of the Terran Marines. Two minutes, first priority is children, crew expendable. The ghosts of New Roanoke are watching. Make them proud announced Gunnery Sergeant Hannah Satsuma. The red lights began to flash yellow. 30-second warning. Gunny Satsuma switched to Platoon's private channel. Brace, she said quietly. Every one of them extended their right foot slightly forward and grabbed the rail next to them. Their shuttle slammed into the enemy airlock, forcing it to connect. Safety's off was ordered and the shuttle doors opened. A few sparks were still shooting from the airlock, where its controls were overridden as the first marines entered. Quickly, two were pointing their rifles to the left and right flanks, as the rest filled in the corridor. Without needing orders, the first team on the left side began to move left, while the rest took the right. David was on the right side next to the squad leader. Based off of scans and available schematics of this vessel, they were heading to the engine room. If they couldn't immediately find the children, they were to disable propulsion so more marines could board. Luckily, it didn't matter if they were taking the, up the only airlock. Terran boarding shuttles were designed so another could be docked with the forward or aft end of each other. Protocol was the first two in the launch tubes were interceptors with faster engines. Once the engines were knocked out and more would be on their way. David turned a corner and saw someone run by. Stop now, he ordered, shining his weapon light on them. His helmet translated into two common galactic languages, but then managed to run by another corner. Resetting the urge to give chase, his team simply continued their assault. When they came to the same corner, David pulled a small cable from his right arm. The camera feed transferred to his helmet and his squad leaders as well. He bent it around the corner and was greeted by gunfire. He quickly pulled back. Two on the left, one center, three on the right, small arms, he announced to everyone. Per tactical doctrine, David and two others each pulled out a stun grenade and set them to detonate a half second after each other. David threw the first, then the other two. Their armor dampened almost all of the explosives in light. Before the pirates could recover, they rounded the corner and opened fire while advancing. As they approached the pirate barricade of supply crates, one of them, still alive, reached for a pistol. They were met with bayonets through their body. The body could be vaguely recognized as Nectan. David looked down to let his sensors scan the body for signs of life. Quickly, they showed a flat line. The team moved on with their visors displaying the direction and distance to the engine room. They neared another corner, the design being common among Enceranian ship designs meant to confuse any non-crew members. David's camera confirmed a barricade, but no one present. Hiding in a crate was a lone crewman. His instructions were clear. Keep the humans out of the cargo bay, or his captain would kill him. He barely saw them quickly come around the corner and was rendered deaf and blind by the sound of explosions around him. Panicking, he opened fire, 
Two rounds seemed to connect and suddenly his world faded to black. David was caught surprised when a crate seemed to open fire. He felt himself go cold as a projectile landed between armor plates and then shooting pain, as another hit him a little lower. Both hits were to his abdomen. His teammates opened fire and he was barely aware of the sounds of impacts against flesh. He fell backwards and landed with his back to the bulkhead. Hospitalman Roger Smith was instantly at David's side. David's armor was already dispensing clotting foam to seal the wound. Corman Smith was getting ready to pull David back to the shuttle when an explosion went off behind him. Several pirates, using their crewmen in the crate as bait, had emerged to ambush the marines. Several well-placed armored piercing shots followed by a grenade had taken out most of the team, including the corpsman. The rest lay dying. Inside, David felt fire within himself. He felt an ember that quickly grew into an inferno. He watched his team die at the hands of scum. He swore to himself that today the universe would learn to never mess with the children of terror, nor their protectors. He keyed a series of commands into his suit's computer. He felt his pain going away, replaced by energy of rage. He took it to his feet, using his rifle to prop himself up. He felt his strength returning and even growing until he screamed, causing the pirates to stop at their tracks. David, like all other marines, had been trained in the final stand protocol of their combat suits. They even did training with toned-down versions of the drugs, but it barely compared to what he felt now. His suit had injected him with a lethal dose of painkillers, adrenaline, nitrous oxide, and stimulants. His entire skin itched, his wounds felt normal, and he lusted for the blood of his enemies. Aiming his rifle, he opened fire as he charged, killing several of them. Another fell to their knees, trying to surrender. They were met with a K-bar emerging from his wrist. He slashed from their throat halfway down their chest. After they fell to the floor, dying, he stomped on their head with his boot. He could barely feel the crunch of bone. Another pirate charged him, and David fired a shot shell from his rifle, the steel pennants tearing through the unarmored alien. David racked and pumped, ejecting the spent shell and loading a new one. He saw three more pirates running and gave chase. Their short legs were no match for his training and rage. The first had a look of terror on their face when the bayonet suddenly emerged from their chest. The one in front of him had no time to react as the rifle discharged another shot shell, blue blood splattering throughout the corridor. David withdrew his rifle and fired a spray of bullets into the third. David dropped the bullet magazine and loaded a fresh one. David heard a scream, a terrified high-pitched scream programmed by millions of years of evolutions to alert parents and trigger an adrenaline response from behind the door to his right. His visor told him the energy readings from the reactor were further away, but he knew that scream too well. He forced the door open. Control room, shutting down propulsion, went over the comm. Within the cargo bay, several pirates had made their last stand. They quickly opened fire, but David's instincts were faster, supplemented by the drugs in his system and his rage. He rolled towards them, coming out of his roll. He went into a firing position and took out two. He ducked and rolled again, still getting closer. The screams were louder, but not in the room. Four more sounds took out two pirates. The lone pirate threw his weapon down and adopted what was becoming the universal symbol of surrender. They raised all four of their arms up and away from their body. David heard more crying and then the sound of a child being hit. The crying got quieter, but didn't stop. David quickly closed the distance and held the bayonet at the pirate's throat. Where? he growled. The alien simply pointed at an access hatch in the bulkhead. Taking no chances, David fired a shot shell. The area and him, David himself was splattered with blood. He loaded his last shell from his magazine tube. David ripped off the access cover and saw an Ensorarian staring at him in amazement, then terror. David reached in and ripped him out of his fortifications. For a split second, he saw several children in there. While still holding the pirate, David managed to throw them across the room. Stay in there, kids, he yelled. David was on the Ensorarian before they could recover. Is that all of them? he demanded, pointing towards the hole in the wall. Yes, all, oh, just business, the Ensorarian replied in broken English. So is this, David responded, as he again brought his boot up 
and then swiftly down on the Ensorarian's head. He repeated this where his hearts were located. Medics to my location. Children rescued, he announced on the all-hand circuit of the comm. Suddenly, feeling very tired, he looked around him and surveyed the room. Briefly, he weighed what was worse, exposing the children to the bloodshed or keeping them in there. He reasoned he needed to see the any wounds. He walked over to them. Many of you hurt, he asked. A man hit Billy, a little girl cried. I am okay, he heard the boy reply, sniffling back tears. That man will never harm you again, Billy. Take my hand. He reached in and barely felt the tiny hands in his glove. It took him a couple minutes to pull them all out. Each child was roughly the same size, though they felt as though they were getting exponentially heavier. When the last one was free, he sat down, leaning against the bulkhead. Who are you? A child, a girl, asked. Lance, Corporal, David, Riggs, Terran Marines. Here to rescue you, he answered, getting harder to speak. He heard footsteps. He grabbed his rifle and named. David felt joy in seeing Gunny Satsuma and dropped his weapon as she lowered hers and recognized two corpsmen entering behind her. Check the kids first. I'll be all right, he announced over the air. Just need a nap. Ignoring him, a corpsman rushed over to him. Bullshit, Dave, he stated over the comms. I gotta get you out of here now, he stated. Is there even a point? David asked, again over the comms. Check the kids first. Get them to safety. I'm not going anywhere. David had always wondered how he would meet destiny. His dad, a retired sergeant major, told him fear was natural and healthy. David had known fear, but now it was a stranger to him. He just felt at peace and tired. A nap sounded so good right now. David reflected on what brought him to this point. His earliest memory of begging his dad to not leave. He was going to a place called Tyrell. He knew it was important. But nothing was more important than spending time with his dad. Of course, he left and then later returned. Then he remembered sixth grade. He and Jenny Robinson were protesting his school's new policy. They'd handcuffed themselves to the lockers and each other blocking the entrance to the principal's office. They failed horribly. Both were suspended. What he remembers the most was when she was uncuffed. He was still handcuffed and she pinned him and kissed him. It was his first kiss. David was older now. He and Jenny had just left their senior prom. Jenny's parents were out of town. They went back to her place. Her parents came home early the next morning. Her dad chased him out while Jenny raged. David had arrived at Paris Island, a hot, humid, and miserable place. Every time he turned around, someone screamed at him, yet he knew that he would rather be nowhere else. The more they screamed, the more determined he became to prove them wrong. Now David was entering a drop pod. He was on training ship and his pod was being fired into the middle of the Australian outback. He could still remember the fear and the heat of re-entry the sudden force of his pot landing on Terran soil. Later yet, he was with his dad. A party had ended, and now they were sitting by a fire pit drinking. They were both horribly drunk. His dad told him that he was, and always had been, proud of him. Everything had led him to this moment. He honestly had no regrets. Guess that answers if I'm re-upping, he thought aloud. For extraordinary heroism and conspicuous gallantry in action against pirate forces, above and beyond the call of duty, while serving the 3rd Battalion, 9th Marine, 2nd Marine Division in Rax's system, the enemy had taken innocent children for ransom. Lance Corporal David Riggs, as a team member of an elite boarding party, engaged the enemy in close quarters combat. During the fight, he was mortally wounded and then his teammates killed by cowardly attacks. Activating the suit's final stand protocol, he personally resumed the battle, killing many pirates and saving over 12 innocent children. Even while dying, he refused treatment so the children could be attended first. His heroic personal valor, honor, and savagery towards the enemy were keeping with the highest traditions of the Terran Marine Corps and worthy of the highest honor of the Terran Republic. Richard Atten, Prime Minister of Terran Republic. Medal of Honor Citation for Sergeant David Riggs. Awarded posthumously.
End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Casper Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.